Okay, hi folks. We have a video here and a set of questions associated with the U.S. Federal Reserve and the specific mechanics of open market operations. In this example, we will be demonstrating how the Federal Reserve takes steps to contract the money supply. If you've not seen my previous video about the expansion of the money supply, you'll, you'll need to go back and perhaps review that before you take a look at this one. But um, let's uh, start off by um, assuming a 10% reserve requirement. And we assume that the U.S. Federal Reserve wants to decrease the money supply from, and again, we're just using these as made up numbers to make it easier on ourselves, uh, $353 to $303 through uh, its open market operation funds. So uh, we'll get to the T sheet analysis here in a minute. Let's just answer a couple of these basic questions before we get into the T sheet analysis. So the first question is. Will, if the Fed wants to decrease the money supply, will it want to buy or will it want to sell securities? And the answer to that is it wants to sell securities, sell securities to the public. It takes then um, money in and uh, can lock it up so that it, it reduces the amount of money in circulation and the amount of money in the money supply. The second question is, what is the money multiplier? And again, the, the money multiplier or the deposit expansion multiplier, those are uh, two phrases that are synonymous, is simply 1 over the reserve requirement. Uh, so that's 1 over 10%, 1 over 0.1, which is 10. So that's the second answer to the second question. Um, the value then of the amount of treasury securities that need to be uh, bought or sold, and in this case sold, is uh, $5. If the money multiplier is uh, 10 and we want to reduce the money supply by $50, that means uh, we take the, the $50 that we want to reduce the money supply by divided by the money multiplier and that gives us the amount of securities that need to be sold. So the answer here is 5. So let's take a look at our T-sheet. And uh, we are assuming, and again you'll have to look further up in this diagram, we're uh, assuming that the Fed starts off at its initial position, uh, which was here, where it's, it's holding on to $83 of securities has $26 uh, in, in reserve bank accounts and is holding $57 of reserve notes uh, in terms of liabilities. Uh, banks here with 26 in reserve, $4 in reserve notes, and the amount of assets in their loans that they're holding is $405. Checkable deposits, uh, 300 and 135 to balance this 405 out. Uh, uh, in liabilities to the stockholders. There's our 300 in terms of checkable deposits, so that 300 belongs to us, the bank customers. We're holding $53 in uh, Federal Reserve notes on our person, and uh, at the moment uh, we've got $52 of, of Treasury securities that we're holding on to for longer term investments. Uh, we've taken out $405 of loans. There, there's that to, to put ourselves in balance. And right now the money supply is at $353. So I've gone through that very, very quickly. You'll see that in my previous video. So again, if you haven't seen it, go back and take a look at it. Um, so now we assume now looking at this example that the Fed wants to decrease the money supply from an initial position of $353 uh, to uh, 303. So what do they do? Well, we already know that they sell securities. So we know that they had had $83 of securities here. And what we want to do in this particular thing is we want to sell. So we want to get rid of $5 of those securities and we sell them, well, to us down here. So this number is going to be uh, 83 minus 5, which is 78. Uh, this number here is going to be minus 5 to indicate that we want to sell off $5 of our security assets. 
Well, who buys those securities? Well, we do. Uh, bank customers buy those securities for longer term investments because uh, they're paid out plus interest at a specified period of time. And for most of us, it's a very good, safe investment. We don't want to have our money on the stock market. We don't want to have our money in mutual funds. We don't perhaps want to have our money in property. Uh, perhaps we see that as too risky that we, we could buy um, treasury securities, which is a, a modest, though safe, um, uh, form of investment. So uh, this number here should be uh, plus five. Uh, this number here uh, should be uh, 57. So we started off with $53, or sorry, uh, $52 of treasury securities. And uh, we've purchased five more, so this number now is going to be uh, 57. So uh, now we want to take a look and see, uh, again, that, that's just where these securities are sold. Let's see how this shakes out at the Federal Reserve level. We'll remember, this is negative 5, this is 78. Our uh, reserve bank accounts have been drawn down by five dollars. That's, that's where the, the, one of the ways that the Fed has, has uh, been able to sell off these, these uh, security assets. So this number over here is, is uh, negative five and our reserve accounts in banks has decreased from 26 to the current number here which would be 21. And again down here then that number uh, is $21 as the uh, reserve accounts in the banks has been decreased. Uh, again, this would be a negative 5 to indicate that the reserve accounts have decreased uh, by $5. Um, the uh, bank hasn't done anything with its Federal Reserve notes, so that number continues to be 4. Um, the bank has uh, decreased or called back uh, the number of loans that it has out in circulation and so we would we would find then that uh, given the reserve ratio now of 10 percent um, the bank has to come up with sort of fifty dollars we know that five of that fifty dollars uh, has been taken out and uh, in terms of the decrease in their reserve accounts well the other fifty or the other forty five out of the fifty is going to come about in a decrease in the loans that banks are uh, able to count as their assets and uh, in terms of uh, then that loaning number here which this is negative 45, this number here will reduce to uh, 360, where it had been 405 before. Uh, if they call back some of these loans, which they are going to, in order again to finance the Treasury securities, then that number comes out of our liabilities. So our liabilities are actually then reduced uh, from 405 to 360 because these two numbers must correspond with one another. And again, this number corresponds with this number and these are both negative 45. Uh, in, in terms of our, our our consumers now, you and I, the bank customers, um, you know we've um, we've had to uh, to pay back the loans uh, to the tune of $45 and so our, our checkable deposits are going to decrease by 45 but remember we also had to purchase the the, the um, Treasury securities in the first place which was another five so we'll actually then see our checkable deposits decrease by 50 which so these two numbers here with our bank customers in here with our, our banks in terms of liabilities will be negative 50 and uh, our, the amount that we have then in our checking accounts will have decreased from 300 to 250, which is what the answer is here. And the answer is here. Uh, again, uh, in terms of Treasury securities, that number was plus 5 uh, to indicate that we've purchased those Treasury securities. And this number then would be 57. So what's happened to the money supply? Well, the money supply um, has, has decreased. Where do we see that? Well, we see that when we add our checkable deposits, which is 250 
and we add that then to the amount of money that we're holding on uh, in terms of our wallets and our, our purses, which is 53, and then that uh, that then uh, gives us a money supply of 303, which is the answer here. Uh, that's the 250 that we have in checkable deposits plus the 53 dollars that we're holding in reserve notes. So um, I hope that. Uh, for my classes in AP that that has been uh, of some help to you uh, in terms of trying to fill in how uh, open market operations is conducted. Um, if you're a little concerned about that or you're still a little bit confused you might want to take a look at this video a couple times until it makes sense. Folks it is it, it is completely unlikely that uh, questions such as these will show up on the AP examination. And the reason that we do it is to take you through a very concrete set of examples to show you how, how the Federal Reserve can act to uh, purchase Treasury securities if it wants to expand the money supply and it can sell Treasury securities when it wants to reduce the money supply. This is a type of money supply management that occurs every single day in the United States and is the most effective way that the uh, U.S. Federal Reserve can regulate and manage the money supply. So if you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to email me and uh, good luck on your upcoming assessments.